Welcome back to the third and final installment of the documentary interview lighting setup series. In the first two videos, we took a look at using a nice big soft source with a six by six soft box that was able to deliver both a nice soft light on our subject while also being able to compete with the window in the background. In the second video, we took a look at using the Westcott C47 book light kit, which is a fantastic option when you have limited space, but still want to get that nice soft look on your subject. In this video, we're going to take a slightly different direction. In the first two videos, we were competing with natural daylight out the windows and lighting everything daylight balanced. So in this video, we're going to take a look at setting up a nighttime scene uh, and doing an interview tungsten balanced with no windows in frame. So let's get started. So I've gone ahead and kind of pre-scouted the location, um, both using my Artemis app and using uh, my Sunseeker app. Now the Sunseeker really is just for me to figure out what windows I need to black out. Um, but as we've seen in the last two videos, the sun is always coming in through this side. So it was important for me to go ahead and black out all of those windows. Um, I went ahead and just did this one as well for any ambience coming in, um, but these are really the main windows we need to contend with. Uh, and then using Artemis, uh, I found our frame, so we've got that set, and I'm looking at an 85 millimeter uh, shooting on the C500 Mark II in full frame. We're just wide open at an 800 on the camera just to give us a starting point. So I'm just gonna start by just throwing up uh, a key light, and it's not gonna be shaped, it's not gonna be refined, it's not gonna be the final product, uh, but it'll just give us some light to start to play with, and then we'll kind of go from there. All right, so for our key light, uh, I'm gonna be using the Aperture 300X, right? The last two we've done the 600D because we needed to compete with these windows. Well, we don't have that problem today. So I'm gonna use the 300X, uh, which is bicolor. So I'm gonna set this to 3200. And uh, let me just get it roughed in. I've got it on my handy rolling stand so that I'm able to quickly move that around. I'm gonna go ahead and open the app so I can control the light. The first thing I need to do is I need to set this to 3200. Great. Um, the next thing that I need to do is I can just play with our levels. For now, I'm just going to leave this where it is right now. Um, you know, it's super bright. And in fact, let me go ahead and just for our, for our frame, you can see how much room we have to play with. So I think the first thing that I want to do is I know I want to be shooting this uh, at a T2. I've got a T2 on and then I just have some light thrown in. So the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna figure out what modifier do I wanna put on this light. So obviously I don't wanna live with the way that the light is looking right now. It's, it's just, uh, I just have the hyper reflector on, it's just super bright, super hard, uh, not interested in doing that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this hyper reflector uh, with my aperture lantern. Um, and that will just give us a kind of a nice starting point of a soft source. Uh, it's relatively small, but unlike what we were doing in the daylight sequences, I don't need a massive large soft source uh, because it is kind of nighttime. It is kind of motivated by lamps. Uh, and so it can be a little bit smaller, a little bit more restrictive and, and not necessarily even as soft as what we were getting out of the, the window light. All right, so here is the lantern. And what's great about this thing is it's super easy to set up. Uh, you know, this is already on, and basically all you do is just push it down and lock it into place. So here's our lantern. And we'll fire it back up. There it is with just the, the ball. Uh, and in fact, let me just pan this over a little bit so it's more focused on our subject. Okay, so softer already, right? can see in the frame, uh, we got a lot softer, um, but we're not gonna live with this. So now we're just gonna use this as effectively a work light so that we can kind of see what we're doing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start kind of crafting what it is that we wanna do in this back corner. So looking at the frame, our main focus is this painting uh, and then this little bookshelf over here. And so what I'm gonna do is I am going to kind of put a little highlight spotlight on our painting. And then for the books, um, I'm actually going to use my Aperture MC lights, and I'm just gonna Velcro those up under the shelves, and that'll just give us a nice little glow on these books, and we'll see what that looks like. So what's nice in our app is I've actually grouped these MCs together. And so 
I can control the two of them at the same time with all the same settings. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to change these from daylight to tungsten. And then I can play with their levels. I'm going to just set them here for now. Um, you know, obviously this is not where they're going to land. And as you can see in the frame that we can see those lights uh, in the shot, but we're going to take care of that. The next thing that I want to do is I want to take a look at this painting. Um, so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use one of my 60 X's and just suspend that off of a C stand uh, and just kind of create a little bit of a spot on that. So I'm going to get that built. So what's great about the 60X is it has a spot and a flood option. So with our spot and a flood, then I'm able to come in and give it a nice sharp edge, which I don't think that I want. I think it's going to be a little bit too much. Or I can just flood this out. I can adjust our barn door so that it's not giving us any shadows over here or over here. And then what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to, because I don't like that shadow on the bottom, I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. Okay, so let's come take a look at our frame over here. Let's now start to play with the level. So that's at 100%. Let me just look. There we go. We're at 3200. And I'm just going to dim this down. So what we can start to see already is that uh, our frame is pretty bright. And, you know, our 60X is at 11%. Our MCs are at 18%, and our 300X is at 14%. So what's going to be really nice is if you have some ambient light that's still creeping into the space, if you're doing kind of a day for night setup, is we've got a lot of room to play with on these lights. So I'm going to make it really dark in here in the camera. I'm going to add some ND. That's two stops. That's four stops. You can see this is now the 300 at 100%. If we come in and we take, we've got plenty of room. That's 100% on the 60X. And that's 100% on the MCs. So we've got a lot of room to play with. Even when we come to these intensities, um, you know, I want to make sure that I've got ample room uh, so I'm not peaking out necessarily at 100% on my light. And what I know is that this is not going to live uh, as it is. I'm going to shape, I'm going to refine, and I'm going to diffuse this. And so by being at 100% where it is right now, it's still just a little bit under. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give myself a stop. So I'm going to take out two stops of ND, and I'm going to drop this down to 400. So we've got enough exposure on our subject at the moment, and we have still plenty of room uh, on our background lights to be able to make those adjustments. So I'm gonna live here for now. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this as a starting point, and then I'm going to add a layer of diffusion in front of this, and then we can start to shape it. But what I really wanna do is I wanna control all of the spill that's going on and, and flooding our background with light. I really wanna focus the key light in on the subject and let the background lights uh, play for the background. So to start to control the spill that we're getting from our key onto our background is I'm gonna use Westcott's DP kit. Um, and you know, Westcott was nice enough to send me this kit, so thank you for that. Um, again, I've been working with the Westcott products for a long time, but I'm excited to be in this new space uh, with their new Scrim Jim Cine frames that are a lot better than, than the previous version. Um, and what's great about this DP kit is it's basically a 4x4 frame uh, that'll come with a variety of diffusions, 
Um, but what's also really nice is it comes with a four by floppy. And so you now have a travelable four by floppy, which is an incredible thing to have. Uh, so I'm gonna put that up and I'm gonna use the full four by eight uh, solid of that. And I'm gonna use that as a cutter to basically cut the light that we're getting from our key light off of the background and just focus it in on our subject. I think that this is gonna be, it's just too hard at the moment. Um, if I look at it, you know, it's pretty dramatic. And so you could live with this. Again, this is an interview uh, that's kind of mimicking, you know, a, a lamp light, which is generally not that soft. So, you know, we could put it in and if we choose, we can take it out, but I'm gonna start by putting it in. And if we look just at what happens when this goes in to our subject versus out and in, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set this in. You can see that it's already making things a lot nicer on our subject. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control all of the light that's coming out from under our key light. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set this additional flag uh, to create kind of a bottom or a skirt. And then that will be able to adjust where the light is falling on our subject. Um, because again, as you've noticed from the last two videos, is I do like to kind of cut where the light is falling so that we have a gradation and we're focusing the light in on the subject. And I think in a setup like this, where it is darker, we're really trying to kind of emulate a lamp light, something a little bit kind of darker and moodier. Um, I think you're really gonna wanna cut this off and not have just a bright source that's unified throughout the top and the bottom of frame. So now that we have the diffusion in, let's take a look. So here we are at 100%. If I do bring this back up to 800, then I've got a little bit more room to play with that. So let me live in there. So I've got two stops of ND at a T2 at an 800. Let's bring our background lights down a lot. And then let's take our MCs way down as well. Okay, so we're starting to get there. I think we're still getting quite a bit of spill on the back of our background. So let me just shake this up a little bit and see what we can get. Okay, that definitely helped bring the background down. That's looking pretty nice. All right, so I actually just flip-flopped uh, the way that these stands are going. Uh, because this one's coming up higher, um, I just put a knuckle on the top of this stand so that I've got room to go up and down. Uh, but then this one, I wanted to have the ability to come lower uh, than what just the height of the stand can do. And I'm already putting this on a short stand. And now I can start to raise it up and down to find the best placement for that. I can find where that cut is. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue this down uh, so that we're cutting any spill that's coming up off the floor and really start to refine that in. With the Road Rags kit, it just comes with one solid, um, but I have a second solid. I'm just gonna use it effectively as a scrap piece of duvetine. And I'm just gonna clip this and effectively make my own kind of two by three floppy. Uh, this is starting to get there. You know, now what the problem is, is we can see the MC lights in our frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of those. And the simplest way to do that is just some, some black gaff tape. Uh, this is two inch black gaff. And I'm just going to hide the light and we're gonna see what that looks like uh, and see if we can work with that. You could just run a piece of gaff tape all the way across, but I don't really find that super distracting, at least for this instance. You know, this is, kind of art directing the background more than anything else. Um, but I feel like this is starting to get to a pretty good place. Um, so let me go ahead and replace my friend here with myself and see if we're getting in the ballpark. And that's feeling pretty nice. Uh, let me just come and now that I'm here, let me just make some adjustments on our key light. Ooh, see now we're starting to get into a good space where our background is really starting to, you know, fall off a lot darker. Um, which I really like. You know, if we wanted to, we could also, instead of doing this, if we wanted to make a stop, you know, adjustment instead, we can. But I kind of like living in the stop that we're at. And so I'm just gonna bring this down and look at something in this world. And, you know, for me, I think this is feeling actually pretty nice uh, for, you know, kind of creating a little bit of a mood. You can see when my hands are here that they're not 
fully lit. As I bring them up, you can kind of start to see where that line is cutting. So the other thing that I'm noticing just sitting in the chair is because I don't have a skirt uh, on the, the lantern, um, is I'm getting a lot of bounce off of the white ceiling. And you know, in this frame, looking at it right now, is I think that actually our ambience is not bad um, because we have the ability to kind of crank up our key light um, and then you know, we can kind of adjust and we can, you know, the brighter that our key light is uh, and then adjusting from an, either an exposure standpoint, then we're able to bring uh, our background down. But what I might do is I might just throw the skirt on this uh, and try to cut what we're getting off of the ceiling. And that'll again really help focus this key light just in on me uh, and not affect the background as much. So now we've got this skirt on, you can see what a kind of drastic difference that it's done in terms of the ambient levels of the background. Um, obviously having our four by eight floppy is helping to cut you know, any frontal spill that we're getting off of our key light to the background. But by putting this um, skirt on is it's also affecting how much uh, light is being bounced up onto the ceiling and kind of filling out the room. So now we've got some flexibility in what we wanna do, right? I think right now is we kind of just have a spot on the bookshelf and we just have our spot on the painting and then we have me. While we're here, uh, let me just take a look at our MC lights. You know, somewhere in here. Okay, that's right back to where we started. Um, and our 60X is still at 1%. This is pretty good. If we wanted to, the only other thing that we could do is we could give ourselves a little bit of a, a negative here. Um, but I think because this environment is already so dark, I think it is kind of nice uh, what the levels are um, on the side of my face. So that's something that you can certainly play around with if, if you want. Well, thank you so much for checking this out. I hope that this series of videos was helpful for you. Obviously there are infinite number of ways that you can continue to refine all of your frames. Um, but I hope that this at least gave you some idea of the things that you might want to consider and some options available to you. So it was really fun going through these three different interview setups uh, in this one space. You know, it's always a challenge when you're needing to crank out one interview, two interviews, three interviews in one day in one space. How do you find different unique ways of doing that? And I hope that this gave you, you know, some ideas that you can start to play with, uh, some of the gear that you can start to play with. I also want to throw out a big thanks to Westcott for sending me their uh, book light kit, for their Cine DP kit, uh, and their six by frame kit. You know, it's, it's something that I've used for, for many, many years, uh, both the, from their fabrics and their original frame, but really starting to see kind of the new elements that they're putting together of the hinges for the book like kit, the four by floppy, the frames that have interlocking connectors and, and stay together and have a lot more rigidity to them. You know, I think that they've made some really solid upgrades with these, so I'm really excited to show those to you. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to this series of videos. I think it's been really fun and I hope that you pulled a lot out of it. Um, if you've liked what you've seen, please consider subscribing to the channel. You know, it really helps to be able to continue providing these types of videos for you. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you again soon.